and boom we'd be ready to plant a warm season cover crop plant something in here that we could eventually put our chickens on but I'm not so sure that's what I want to do what's up lazy dog fam hope everybody out there is having an amazing day I'm 100% recovered from having the roner last week feeling good been doing a lot of cleanup in the gardens today and got a little bit more to go so I want to take you guys along but before we get started I want to kind of pick your brains a little bit as far as what you'd like to see on the channel in the next couple months so we're done with July August is still pretty hot down here but we're in the short rows as far as the summer heat goes only got a month month and a half of it left and then it should start cooling off down here which means we got to start thinking about fall gardening pretty soon you know mid to the end of August we'll be starting some cool season crops in the greenhouse hold on just a second so these ducks these are the neighbors ducks over there they've been coming over here every day last couple days I've been feeding them some watermelon and they have become spoiled rotten now they're over here walking around quacking waiting on me to give them a watermelon <laughs> okay 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 hold on yeah I know Love it. Y'all have never seen ducks eat watermelon. It's a pretty funny thing to watch. And these old tender sweet orange watermelons we grew, I showed you on the last video, they're not really that great. So we just been giving them to the neighbor ducks and they seem to enjoy them. I believe y'all can tear one up quicker than our chickens can. Okay, so where were we? Yeah, fall planting. So fall planting is gonna be coming up soon, getting a lot of cool season things started in the greenhouse to hopefully then start getting them in the ground come October or so. That's kind of our schedule down here. So what do you wanna see me talk about on upcoming videos as far as fall gardening goes or cool season gardening goes? You know, I'm sure we'll do a lot of stuff on seed starting, you know, planting times, plot preparation, drip irrigation installs. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see as we start gearing up for some cooler weather and some different things in the garden. And then as far as what we need to do today in the garden, we've got our spring, early summer watermelon plot behind us here. We got all the rest of the good watermelons out of there on the last video. So now we need to do some clean up here. We need to get this drip tape out of here. Might need to mow it a little bit. I haven't really decided what I'm gonna do with it yet, whether I'm gonna cover crop it or maybe tarp it. I think I may tarp it. Anyway, we'll get to that once we get it cleaned up. Let's get this tape out of here, get it mowed down a little bit, and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do. all right all right all right so the mower actually did a pretty good job of getting that clean it's by no means ready to plant but it did get a lot of that junk out of there drug some of those vines out of there plowed some of those old runt watermelons over to the end there and uh looks a lot better than i thought it would so considering how good a job the mower did we could technically turn this over and plant a warm season cover crop here pretty quickly all we'd have to do is rake it out maybe wheel hoe it one time and boom we'd be ready to plant a warm season cover crop plant something in here that we could eventually put our chickens on but I'm not so sure that's what I want to do so the chickens are going to be done right here in just a few days and then they're going right over here to that lush cover crop of soybeans they'll probably be there at least a month and then this pearl millet cover crop that we planted a few videos ago is looking really, really good. Came up really nicely. And so after the soybeans, the chickens will go here and be here for at least a month. So we've already got two months worth of cover crops planted for the chickens, which should get us all the way to October 
which is the time when we start thinking about planting cool season cover crops. So I don't think we need to plant any more warm season cover crops this year. I think the best thing we can do is to just kind of put this plot on pause for a little bit. Just put it on pause for a couple months. We may want to plant some cool season veggies here. We may just want to plant a cool season cover crop here. Either way, we're not going to do that until early October. So let's just put it on pause for a couple months. And the best way to do that is with a tarp. <laughs> Bubby, what you got in your pockets? Seven eggs. Seven eggs? Uh, four eggs in one pocket and three in another? I hope they don't bust. <laughs> So we got our tarp, got a few bricks there, even was able to round up a little help. So we're going to put this tarp out here and then I'll tell you about all the great ways you can utilize a tarp in your garden. All right, now that we got our tarp out here, got it held down with some bricks, let's talk about why I think tarps are so useful, the many different ways you can use a tarp, and why I think it's important for everybody who has an in-ground garden to have a tarp in their tools arsenal. So there's lots of different ways or lots of different reasons we use tarps here at Lazy Dog Farm. One reason would be to do what we just did here, just put this plot on pause for a couple months. Like old Ron Popeil used to say, you just set it and forget it. So what that tarp's going to do is it's going to force any of those weed seeds that are on top of the soil there. And we had a few growing up in and amongst those watermelon plants. Going to force those weed seeds to germinate. When they germinate, there won't be any light and they'll die. So it'll help, you know, kind of get this plot more manageable as far as the weeds go. Now another way to use a tarp, and we've talked about this a lot on the channel, is to work on your weed seed bank. So if you have a plot that's just inundated with weed seeds, you can't keep up with the weeds in that plot because they grow so fast. You can use a tarp to decrease that weed seed bank. And you do that through kind of a tarp and cultivate technique. So if I was really wanting to work on my weed seed bank here, what I'd do is I'd leave this tarp on here about two weeks, pull it back, cultivate it whether that be tilling it although this is a no-till plot we wouldn't till this one but you know wheel hoe it lightly cultivate it whatever put the tarp back on for a few weeks pull it back off cultivate it again put it back on and that will really decrease the number of viable weed seeds you have in your plot and just you know make gardening more enjoyable for you Another way to use the tarp is to extinguish or to terminate a cover crop. So if we had a cover crop planted here and it, we didn't want to till to terminate that cover crop, we could just mow it down then put the tarp on it, leave it on there for a couple months, and the tarp would do the cover crop termination for us. And then a fourth way a tarp can really help you in your garden is just when you're getting too much rain and maybe you got some planting you want to do. So I've used the tarp for this in the late winter early spring months if we're getting a lot of rain i can't plant taters because the soil's too wet so what i've done in the past is just put a tarp on a plot you know it's still going to get a little bit of water from runoff but not near as much water as it would get if it was uncovered that keeps the plot somewhat dry so i can still come in and plant things when i want to plant them so whether it's just to put a plot on hold to reduce your weed seed bank terminate a cover crop or just to keep a plot from getting too much water. There's tons of useful ways to utilize a tarp in your garden. And once you start using one, you'll realize just how useful they are. All right, so now that that plot is set for a couple months, the last thing we need to do today is get some more of these fall pumpkin transplants in the ground. And so on that last video, we put two rows of these warty goblin transplants in the ground in this plot. One row on that side of the peppers, one row on this side of the peppers. And I watered these a little bit yesterday, probably need to turn on the water again. They're looking a little rough. It's pretty warm out here today. We'll give them a little water and get them back looking healthy again. Hopefully those things take off and start growing pretty quick. And then late yesterday, I came out here and got this cleaned up. So this is where our indeterminate tomatoes were. We had that T-post and conduit trellis. Got all that taken down, didn't take long. Got this soil cleaned up here. And so what we have here is we have two rows of tape that are buried beneath 
those two rows of straw there. Left that straw in place because I thought that'd be a mighty good place to put these pumpkin transplants and hopefully that straw will continue to conserve some moisture for us there give us some weed suppression as well and then the pumpkins can kind of just climb all over the place whenever they get up and going so we got the warty goblin in the ground most of these in this tray are the polar bear variety which we're saving for that plot that the chickens are on right now we'll get those in the ground within the next week but today going to be putting in these guys this cargo variety which is supposed to be a kind of a big tall upright nice jack-o-lantern type now with my drip tape being buried and underneath that straw there's really no way i'm going to be able to make sure a plant gets placed on top of a drip emitter but my hope is that with this straw there that the moisture is well conserved underneath there and it's not going to really matter if a plant is right beside a drip emitter or not so what I'm going to do is just try to kind of equally space these along these two rows right here, get the transplants two or three feet apart or so. I am going to put a little handful of this NatureSafe 10 to 8 down when we put each transplant in the ground. So uh, let's get after it. Whew, y'all, it's so hot out here, it's hard to breathe. But we got them nestled in there. I'm glad I didn't have no more than two rows to plant today because I don't know that I'd have made it. We got them tucked in there, and as I was scratching around underneath that straw, I was pleased to find that there was a good bit of soil moisture in there. So that straw is conserving a lot of moisture for us, and Planting these pumpkins here will allow us to get more of our money's worth out of that straw that we used on our tomatoes there. We know there's a good bit of worms down there, a good bit of soil biology from when we dug around looking for that fish a few videos ago somewhere right here. So should be some pretty good soil for these fall pumpkins. And we got a good bit of room for them to roam right here. We're a little bit limited on this side by this glass gem corn. It's not drying as fast as it normally would because we've had so much rain. It's still kind of green. The ears haven't fallen yet. I'll give an update, show you a few ears of that on an upcoming video. But I'm hoping by the time these pumpkins do get to sprawling, this corn will be done. I can mow it down and that'll give the pumpkins a little more room. And with those pumpkins planted, I'm officially caught up for the day. Tomorrow's a new day and I'm sure there'll be more stuff to do tomorrow. But what's in order for me right now is to go inside take me a cold shower and cool off because i am hot i am really really hot so thanks for joining me today and make sure to let me know in the comments below what kind of videos you want to see coming up on fall gardening cool season gardening all that kind of good stuff if you're watching on youtube make sure to check out our affiliate links below a lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at lazy dog farm even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts make sure to go check out our website lazydogfarm.com where we've got recipes hats shirts recommended products all kind of good stuff over there if you did enjoy the video make sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm <music>